Right, so are black women really at a disadvantage when it comes to marriage? Now, according to the National Health Statistics Report, the probability of first marriage for black women by the age of 25 is 24 percent, and by the age of 35 is 58 percent. And many black women are suffering from bouts of depression because of their single status. And our guest today says nourishing the mind, body, and soul is the gateway to marriage. Please welcome heart and soul contributor, relationship, marriage, and professional counselor, Natalie Dyer. Hi, Natalie. Hello, how are you all this morning? Very well, Great. thank you. Thank so you. tell us, why is it so hard, at least why does it seem so hard for black women to get married these days? Well, I believe it's very difficult uh, for black women or women in general um, because there's a lack of awareness of self, um, not willing to identify those things that are within ourselves and actually work on those things. Um, I think it's easier to look at someone else and see their flaws than it is to look inside and see our own and then work on those and then have a better package to present, honestly. Judge Karen, I know you've seen a lot of relationships in front of you in and outside of court. Mm -hmm. Do you agree with that? How do you feel? Well, you know what? I think that there's so many statistics that are thrown at black women, and, and I don't know if it's all fair, because you got to have somebody to marry. Amen. Right? And, you know, with a large <laughs> percentage of black men of unavailable to marry, mm -hmm. I think... Part of the awareness that needs to change for black women is that there are more men out there than just black men. Exactly. Uh, okay, there's, yeah, exactly. There's, there's white because men, for some there's black men, men loyal there's to... Arab. Yeah, you yeah. need to let go of that. <laughs> you need to let go of that life. Let go of that loyalty. Right, yeah. Let go of that loyalty. You don't owe anybody any happiness but yourself first. Exactly. You have to put yourself first. What do they say when you get on a plane? Put the mask on yourself first before you help your child. Mm -hmm. I think that we as women, as black women, mm -hmm. we have to start taking care of ourselves. Absolutely. Well, um, so do you think that men are intimidated by the educational, professional, and maybe financial successes of black women? You know, I've heard a lot of women say that, black, yeah. white, and otherwise, that, well, I'm, I'm having a hard time finding a man because I'm a professional woman. 90% of the women that say that to me, they got other issues. Right. And all the reasons why they don't have a man. It's got nothing. Because you know what? There's a homo on the street that'll stop and talk to you. There's a guy picking up a garbage can that'll stop and talk to you. But a doctor Touché. with a degree is intimidated to talk to you. I think when a man is attracted to you, he's going to talk to you. Natalie, what's your take on that? What do you think? I completely. Like I said before, I think that there are flaws within ourselves that are not identified. They're it's easier to put it on somebody else rather than dealing with ourselves and then being wrecked the relationship the money that you make and being the ceo of the company is not the issue there are others internally that have dealt with now i know um like we just talked about this how mm -hmm. black women have feel a sense of loyalty mm -hmm. to, to black men and so mm -hmm. that's why we tend to only date them but mm -hmm. i we're probably missing out on a lot of life, I believe so, because I've dated outside my race and I've had a great time. <laughs> what do you think, Natalie? Uh, About dating outside of your race, do you think it's better for black women to have an open mind in that area? Well, definitely. Um, there's no limit on the men. I mean, men are across the board, can't they be, or whatever. They lure them into being into a relationship with someone. Surely it's, it's race that makes it, because there's some black that are just great, and they're making one of another race that's not that may be more beneficial for you mm, absolutely yeah. now you know many people just they're not ready for marriage so how do you actually prepare your mind your body your soul for that next mm. step i think the most important thing is the way that we think about things if we have a mind that is chaotic and that is not uh peaceful mm -hmm. uh, a mind that is not humble a mind that is not focused or purpose then the rest is not going to be able to function properly anyway. Because if we think a certain way, then our bodies respond to our thoughts. If we think a certain way, then our actions follow our thoughts. Mm -hmm. and we, have, we have to make sure that our minds are settled and at peace. And that's even a more spiritual aspect of things. We have to make sure that our minds are just set and not wondering and, like I said, chaotic. They have to be at peace. I like that because it does start with you and it's that whole law of attraction. Mm -hmm. What you feel is what you're going to attract mm -hmm. to yourself. So if you're feeling down and out, then that's the kind of man Person that you'll you're going to attract. attract. Yeah. You have to be in love with yourself first mm -hmm. because if you don't love you, nobody's going to love you. Right. Nobody Amen can love that. you more than you love you. That is correct. You won't have great boundaries that you need. You won't have, um, you won't, you'll have the expectations of your and of us. So yes, you have to love yourself first and be happy with you.
you have to be enough. Well, I know a healthy mind promotes good social relationships that can lead to marriage, but what are some aspects of a healthy mind? How do you know, okay, I'm good? <laughs> yeah. A, a healthy mind, like I said, is a mind that, that's at peace, one that's not chaotic, that's not cluttered with everybody else's issues or wondering what's wrong with them that they aren't attracted to me or wondering what's wrong with me that I can make them be attracted to me. Um, being at peace, knowing who you are, settled in that, a mind that is humble, that's not too puffed up, that doesn't mm. think that you're all that when you're really not, Amen. or just being confident is a great thing rather than being haughty and arrogant. And a mind that's focused, having goals, re going towards your goals and being focused on those rather than a relationship because it's during those times when relationships kind of happen, when you're not even focused on trying to be in a relationship. You're just trying to do you and have life, and then here he comes. Awesome. Absolutely. Judge yeah. Karen, what do you think about well, that? Well, you know, I think we spend a lot of time focusing on our hair and on clothes and on makeup. You walk into any beauty salon on a Saturday afternoon, 4 o'clock in the afternoon, been there since 9 o'clock in the morning waiting to get your hair done. We waste a lot of Saturday afternoons in a beauty True. salon. We need to be out playing tennis, learning how to dance, mm -hmm. taking language <laughs> lessons, and making yourself multi-talented. Yeah. I mean, an attractive woman is a woman who's got something to talk about. If all you can yes, talk about, absolutely. we're going to be talking all day with our special <laughs> guest host. Thank you, Natalie. If you guys want more information, make sure you head to Heart and Soul. She's a contributor. We're going to be right back in just a minute with Judge Karen. Don't go anywhere. <laughs>